but it's still double the speed of what I was seeing on things before. So it's, it's kind of hard to complain about this. All right, my friends, what we have here is my big, fat, ugly storage server. All these hard drives in this machine are hooked up to this thing. This is a PCI Express SATA controller with a port multiplier, which means it's slower than a dead dog. And we have several drives over here. Uh, I believe there are eight on this side and two over here. I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do to get this uh, upgraded to this LSI 9211. Yanking all these SATA cables out of this port multiplier POS here that doesn't want to let go. And I can't do it one-handed. Come on. There you go. There we go. I am the Lord of the Harvest. And the harvest apparently is this card with a port multiplier and a SATA controller. Yep. That's quite a harvest, and in will go the LSI, but we need to get all these SATA cables out of here too, and that's not going to be fun. I am the Lord of the Harvest. Kinda, yeah, okay. I'm being very goofy. Oh look, Easy Stores. Tons and tons of Easy Store shucks. Well, now that I've revealed that those are all Easy Store shucks, you're probably wondering what I do about the 3.3 volt pin issue. I mean, you can use Molex to say it is like these. If you use the wrong kind, like these, then the data hoarder subreddit will yell at you for being dumb and causing fires. Um, but the other option is to take your lovely overpriced power supply and cut the 3.3 volt wire like a ghetto redneck boss. Whatever. Did someone say new wires? Because I got new wires. LSI Logic Controller, yay! And my phone keeps going off, yay! <laughs> and it, there's a wire in the way, yay! Mm. Yes, that's an X2 port. Yes, I'm hoping it works. Also, it looks like we're going to need to install an additional fan over here because this LSI controller does not have its own cooling. But, in the meantime, let's plug up the new wires if we can. So let me tell you about that vertical arrangement that I didn't get. Yeah. Whatever, it was cheaper. And I get to pay for it. There we go. There we go. Beautiful. Here's where things get a little ugly. We have quite a few drives and the breakout cables have to be plugged into them. And that's going to be interesting because there's not enough room in the case for straight SATA connectors once you add the breakout cable. So, you know. One breakout cable, two breakout cable, come on. <sighs> Three breakout cable, four breakout cable. And then on top of that, every single one of these is going to have to have a right angle power connector. And uh, we have that, but we also have another problem in that it sticks out a lot. So I'm not sure what to do about this right now, other than maybe smash my cell phone, um, since it's gone off every single time I've tried to record a clip. So I'll use this molded for your hatred, I mean pleasure, 
SATA converter here, I suppose. Actually, that's the farthest one in, and it's not angled. Let's let's use the other rail. Let's switch over. So there's two power rails in here. This one has the like the only angled and uh, still molded for your hatred connector. These are these loops here. This is this is quite literally. And I don't know if I can get this to stand on this box or not. It's not looking like it. But these loops. Come on, dumb box, stay up. There we go. These these loops, these power loops, are sticking up, and I know for a fact these have to go flush, or it won't fit. They have to. The the data wires aren't the problem. These wires are the problem. So let's see what happens. Oh man, this is this is turning into a bit of a quagmire, really. I may have to come back to this tonight. Because I don't know that I have the time or inclination. Oh my god, and these hard drives are very heavy. I mean, it's not so heavy when you're holding one drive in your hand, but when you're holding a series of drives, it's hell on earth, really. Trying to get them to play nice. Alright, so this is... This whole thing is just mildly sketchy. No matter how you cut it, this is not going to be pretty. It It is all kind of sitting on top of the power supply. Very, very unapologetically butted right up against it. Alright, all these blue wires have to come over. Getting this out later to service it will also suck. So you should feel very bad for me and my self-inflicted problem. At least I don't have to worry about them all that much. Three is empty. Four is there. And uh, it occurs to me, I don't even need this converter. I'll just throw it in there somewhere, but... All right. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Why do you have... Ooh, it's a bit overexposed over here, isn't it? Uh, why do you have all these hard drives here, but there's a gap, and you have a spare cable on this nice, fast LSI 9211 controller, blah, 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 blah. Like, why are you not yanking one of these other drives, since you have two on the other side hooked to the internal SATAs? Why don't you pull one of those and put it over here and get the uh, faster LSI thingy to go faster? Well, I'll answer that question for you. That slot is an X2 slot, so it's bandwidth limited. Now, uh, these other ones are connect directly to some internal PCI Express lanes and are faster, so the LSI technically is slower. That's why. Less drives on the LSI means more performance. It's just a dumb SATA controller for as far as this is concerned. And remember, this is like a Celeron J4005 this thing's not exactly pushing massive amounts of data anyway. But that's the controller. Now we're going to boot it up and see if everything burns. And I may move that fan as well. What the heck's a guy got to do to get a fan moved? Eh, apparently this weird crap. And that filter's got to come out too, so... Yep. <sighs> Yummy! and unscrew that, move it over here. Pretty straightforward. You'll notice here that I have uh, tucked away some of the wires that were over here that could have gotten in the fan. They've been tucked over there to the drive side, which does not have a fan there. Fan's been moved. This wire is tucked under the fan where it can't go anywhere. Uh, this fan wire is kind of shoved over and it's not being totally cooperative, but Maybe I can tuck it as well. Just get it to stick under that fan so that it doesn't go anywhere. There we go. Yeah, as long as it's stuck under there and nobody's kicking the server like a football, it should be okay. Yeah, so that'll cool our LSI card there. Um, the Celeron is also air-cooled. 
Um, but the airflow from this should push enough fresh air in the case that that thing will cool just by straight convection. So I'm not too worried about that. Never had a problem with these. They're like 10, I think 10 watt at the most, maybe less chips. So yeah, not super worried about that. But uh, the other fun thing is getting these silly filters to just play nice and go back in place and not fall out when I try to put the faceplate back on. All right, a little bit scared to do this, but moment of truth. Does it work? Does it explode? Don't know yet. Ass rock. It's an ass rock. Yeah, buddy. Now, Fortunately for me, since I have those two other drives, I don't have to boot from the array. Uh-oh. Tritech service system. Old. Well, yeah, that's what definitely what I want. Let's see if it works. Alright, don't catch on fire. Come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Yeah, look at those wires, man. Look at that. Yeah. Alright. Well, I'll let you know how it goes. So if you have nine drives, what do you expect to see? Well, you expect to see nine drives. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Nine drives, boys. We are successful. Now I just need to test it before I trust it. All right. Let's see what the benchmarks look like. Well, there we go. MD127 and 126. And they show up here in the... In the MD stat file. There you go. Let's see how fast it is, eh? Moment of truth, part two. This is the whole array. And we are there. Now, previously I was getting about 300, 300, 350. It maxed out around there with the um, other controller that has the port multiplier. Now that I've got this LSI that can handle all the drives independently, it looks like this Celeron is pushing raw data out of this array almost 900 megs a second at the start of the array. That is just a beautiful thing. That's a three times speed up. Let's see how it goes when I do the encryption. Oh, don't mind me just running some crypt setup benchmarks on this Celeron J4005. Uh, on which I use AES due to the acceleration, not CBC. Uh, get to the XTS. Come on. I hate CBC. There you go. AES XTS 256. Uh, 256 is actually more secure for some reason. And look at that. That's, that's the raw throughput of the processor on encryption and decryption. 1.5 gigabits per second, or gigabytes per second. So now we're going to find out how fast the encrypt encryption works over a RAID array. All right, here we dropped caches, and now we're going to dump the RAID array with encryption. And you can see it is slower. I mean, it is a Celeron. Come on, just have some realistic expectations here. It is slower, <clears throat> but it's still double the speed of what I was seeing on things before. So it's, it's kind of hard to complain about this. Um, a, a, le a 2x speed up is still, that's double the speed. That's still fantastic. Uh, so I'm pretty happy about that. All right, with all of that being a success, it's time to shut it up. Put those side panels on, which, uh, like everything else computer related, is really effing hard to do with one hand. And close it up. Now, I can't remember if this is the Node 304 or 804 case, but. I think it is the 804. It's the bigger one that holds a lot of hard drives. And uh, yeah, so that was a really terrible showing for me trying to close it up with one hand. So I'll use two hands, like an actual professional might, and make some magic happen. Uh, and something is stuck, of course. That's the way it seems to go, though. There's always something. Always something in the way. Always something has to make things difficult. Yeah, no. I'll figure it out eventually. Maybe. Spoilers! The clear door doesn't go where the hard drives are. Gee, I wonder why it didn't install nicely. 
Maybe because it's not in the right place, as evidenced by the screw holes being different on the doors. Oh look, that went on nicely. Hmm. You know, it helps if you put it back together properly. I hope this has been educational. Have a good one.